Nam mô Sakya Munai Ye Buddhaya Dear beloved Thầy, dear beloved community Do you see that when we come to the monastery, uh, park the car and have a chance to do walking meditation, we breathe with the fresh air, with the warm sunlight of the morning, and now we have a chance to sit down in stillness. Do you feel happy? To me, it on. I taste a lot of a lot of happiness when I can hear uh, the call of Thay. And this is one of his calls. I would like all of us to look at this. Dove means come back or coming back. Can you hear me okay? I have this habit that when I see Thay's writing, Thay's calligraphy, even though that they are, they were written long ago in old calendars. To me, they are uh, my inheritance. Whenever the the calendar is old, I uh, ask to keep them and uh, just keep them. Now I'd like to invite the Sangha to listen to Thay's call. Come back. Come back. Thay asks us to come back to the present moment, here and now, right now. We find a place on the chair or on the cushion and we sit still, not doing anything. Allow ourselves to stop. Allow ourselves to be calm to listen to the bell, the call of the Buddha, to recognize our own breathing. Uh, something wrong with the translation system, so I wait a little bit. But at least you will get my message. Practice. Stop it now. Don't wait. Practice stopping now. Don't you don't have to wait. Every moment, each moment is the moment that we can enjoy life. We can enjoy. We can enjoy our precious moment. Our precious moment. We have now a lot of things. Many things, a lot of things. So, I would like to invite. I would like to invite everyone. We can sit. To begin sitting. To sit beautifully, quietly, and relaxingly. Like the mountain like the mountain and come back, come and, back to ourselves. and come back to ourselves. Can you hear me now? And we can enjoy three sounds of the bell. And do nothing. And don't, we don't have to do anything. Sister Jingying, she 
will invite three sounds of the bell. And you will hear the call of the Buddha calling you to come back, to come home. Dear Sangha, do you see that today I have something different? Can you see? I present myself uh, my I present myself in front of a community with my novice rope, with uh, my a headscarf. That is the beauty, the happiness. Uh, more that um, that I experienced when I was ordained by Thai to wear a novice robe to feel that you are young. You only listen. You only know to listen to to entrust yourself in the sangha to allow yourself to flow in the stream of the sangha. That uh, happiness uh, to be able to be young and to have elders leading you. It is invaluable. And this novice robe, it represents uh, something simple. So it uh, represents simplicity. Uh, uh, of a, of a uh, novice nun. I have a, a young sister who wrote a very beautiful poem about the novice rope. Novice rope, you can see, is buttoned right in the middle. Sometimes over the years we think, oh, now we are elder in the Dharma. And then we take it for granted, we forget. And we don't recognize that we are still a child of the Sangha. So, the last few days, uh, in order to prepare for this talk, I light up uh, the fire in my heart with uh, in many forms. I reread uh, uh, my writings from the past and I wrote, there was one I wrote, uh, I wrote to Thay and Thay gave it uh, the name, the Sutra on the Beginner's Mind. Oh. And, and then it was published in uh, Plum Village more Magazine. I recall those images when I just came to the path as a novice. It, they are, they're so beautiful to me. And on this occasion, I also want to, it's like to begin anew with the Sangha, to apologize to the Sangha that uh, in recent time, because of my health in body and mind, it affected me and it caused me to, it made me want to withdraw into my own corner. 
And I see that if I continue to be like that, then I, I don't, I cannot realize my aspiration. And I also want to take this opportunity. Uh, to share with my 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 dharma friends you may not be in the form of a monastic there are young there are women here who came from my own town or came from my own age group and now maybe they they have health problems that they cannot come uh, to the monastery physically anymore and and I have a friend who's going through that and hopefully she'll listen to my talk and she will feel the energy of the three jewels, the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, the energy of mindfulness, the energy of somebody who is a sincere practitioner uh, who wants to transform and heal. That energy is always there. And I hope you also listen to my talk and benefit from it. Yesterday, uh, in the uh, during the the being being we sat together as a family for in memory in commemoration of uh, Ong Lam, a long term practitioner and also husband of Bak Yu Yung or Amelia, Amelia. Uh, and the song was played yesterday. They lived together for almost 60 years. And they sang together the song, uh, My hand is holding a plate of salt and uh, ginger, using the ginger to dip into the salt. The, the salt is salty and the ginger is spicy. And may we not ever leave each other. May we not ever walk away from each other. And such sweetness in in those words, in those songs. And it helps me recall my old, my old aspiration as well. So that I do, do not walk away out of anger or out of sadness that I find uh, corner of my own because always I will wear this brown robe. Please uh, give us a sound of the bell. I will talk about real people and real things. Plum Village brothers and sisters, when we share, we talk about things that we have experienced ourselves. We don't talk. We don't use big words. And so, if you... <laughs> If you see in my unskillfulness of sharing, please uh, forgive me. Nowadays, there are many people who, who ask for consultation from brothers and sisters. They suffer a lot, even though, even if they were born in wealthy families. A young man recently came for a consultation uh, with uh, a sister, and uh, both uh, he had a brother who also died from addiction, and so and then the the other brother also suffered a lot because this. This young man also suffers from addiction as well. And 
chia sẻ so, để mà cho from cái lời the sharing lắng nghe nhắc nhở well, with đó, thưa cô có nói rằng advice cô reminders and she said that Out there, people are addicted to drugs, uh, alcohol, all sorts of things. But sometimes we have this addiction, an additional addiction. And that is the addiction to our, our suicidal ideation. We're addicted to that. Suicidal ideation. And we want to just vanish from this life. Whenever a suffering arises, we don't want to confront it. We just want to run away from it. And dear Sangha, I was like that before. When I was younger, I'll read it to you. A letter that uh, I wrote to Thầy asking Thầy to allow me to become an OI member. Uh, it was written in 1999. It's very genuine, sincere, and very strong. Until now, it's 24 years now for me to wear the the OI jacket, and then to be a nun, to be a Dharma teacher, I feel I have not been able to realize my aspirations, my promises to Thay. I have not been able to do it. I'll read it to you. Dear Thay, dear brothers and sisters, One time in a Dhamma talk, uh, Thầy wrote two lines. Uh, I vow to be a, uh, a, a river and not be a small drop of water. And Thầy asked us to continue, and then I continue. And I, I wrote that uh, I will take refuge in the Sangha in order to arrive to the ocean. Dear Thay, when I was nine years old, 11 years old, then I grew up to be 18 years old and 37. That's when I asked to be ordained as an OI member. Now I'm already 67 years old. I see that I am a lonely drop of water. Sometimes my drop of water is um, solid, dirty. Sometimes it's dark color, uh, black, black, uh, purple color. Sometimes there was pain, there was jealousy, there was pain that I wanted to vanish. But the water cannot disappear, right, Thay? So then I had enough conditions to be reborn in the true Dharma. I met Thay. Once you sit down, you end all afflictions. My drop of water is no longer separated or lonely. I learned to write poetry like the king, Trang Nhân Thong, the Zen master, Trang Nhân Thong, the flower, uh, blooms on the eyes and it, even the worldly flowers cannot be as fragrant but this flower from my eyes from my heart I offer to the Buddha I see myself in everybody everywhere and I can melt so much more easily I see there's freedom in me And I am grateful that Thay appeared in my life and helped me to see that life is miraculous. I'm grateful for my suffering so that I know what is happiness um, when I don't have to suffer so much inside anymore. I'd like to offer Thay a poem that I wrote. It's also a direction for me to go forward. My The Buddha mind is immense. And uh, the meaning of emptiness is most mer uh, miraculous. And I learned, I vow to learn the, 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 the moon, the image. The, and I vow to see the true nature of all things. 
And I promised Thầy that in uh, that I will not wait until this age to become a nun. But as a child, two, three years old, when I hear the sound of the great temple bell, I would ask my mother to allow me to follow Thầy. That would be my next life. I made that promise. Dear community, all of us suffer in our life. Sometimes it's caused by us. Sometimes it's because we don't understand, we don't know how to practice the five mindfulness trainings of our unskillfulness uh, or from some circumstance. Or sometimes it's from the challenges, the um, thorny uh, parts of our life of, and, and society that cause us suffering. That now there are a lot, we, uh, many of us are victims uh, of ourselves, of our families and society. So I am a monastic practitioner and you may be the lay people who come to with a genuine aspiration to practice, we ask ourselves, what should we do? And I see that in order to discover and to realize our aspirations and to be able to hear the sound of the great bell from thousands of years until now, in order to come back, to relax, to let go our own ego, our own notion of self. It is a process, a, 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 a training. It is, a, it is a process, a practice that sometimes you can do it, sometimes you cannot do it uh, upon reflection. I see those are the things that I, we can call those are drops of emptiness. And if we know how to practice and we can discover and pick up in our daily life in these drops of emptiness, then we will have, we will be happy, we will be peaceful. Otherwise, we only talk and we believe that, oh, we wear a brown robe and we shave our heads, then we become, oh, we are different from the world. Yet our worldly substance is still a lot. Like I myself, I recognize that I still have to purify myself a lot. And so I ask myself to be careful. And you can see, uh, you, uh, you can see on the board, I wrote uh, Thay's, one of Thay's poem. It's, uh, the title is Drops of Emptiness. It's coolness in my heart, thanks to drops of emptiness. Uh, suddenly, the boat has crossed to the other shore. The sand, the shore beach, the sand is soft. My heart is cooled by drops of emptiness. Suddenly I see a tiny boat has crossed the rivers and reached the shore of non-yearning, soft sand, empty beach, old promises, poem by Thay. Thay uses a very simple, natural, light image very familiar image, and yet it can reflect such deep teachings of the Buddha. Two years ago, we had uh, uh, the precepts uh, transmission ceremony, uh, and we used the theme for the theme as a crossing to the other shore. Uh, and then we use a, a, a border to write the word Waba, crossing to the other shore. And that's in front of the sister's dining hall. You don't need to go anywhere to cross to the other shore. You don't need a 
a boat or a bridge to go to the other shore. Crossing to the other shore here, it is a practice so that we have insights and this sutra that and like in the last years of Thai, uh, before Thai had a stroke, Thai retranslated the heart, um, the prashna parameter, we used to call the heart of perfect understanding, and Thai retranslated it as the insights that brings us to the other shore. And Thai wrote a book on this. Uh, the heart of uh, understanding. This book, Thai also in this book, Thai also talked about the heart uh, of perfect understanding, prajna paramita, and Thai retranslated re it as the insight that brings us to the other shore. It's very powerful. So in a little while, when we chant. This the insight that brings us to the other shore. When we recite the five mindfulness trainings, you will see how powerful it is. In order to cross to the other shore, uh, the shore of suffering, it is uh, it it requires us to be very sincere in our practice. Uh, I didn't study much, but I like to read, and, and I listen to Thay's Dharma talks. Oh, I listen. I listen to TED talks, and Sister Dang Im, Sister D, whatever she learns, she also share with me, and I. I learned that nowadays people have to face many problems like uh, artificial intelligence. I think to myself, oh, thank goodness I'm still a human being so that I can recognize my own shortcomings, my own suffering, so that I can find a way out. And I'll recount my um, story, how I can recognize and find a way out of my suffering and difficulties. Dear beloved community, I've had many opportunities to learn from Thai, to listen to the elder brothers and sisters teaching and Thai's talks. There are thousands and thousands of talks from Thay. Then our uh, our practice, Thay brought engaged Buddhism, and now we call applied Buddhism. In this century, we called applied Buddhism. That's our tradition. And I ask myself, what do I apply? With my knowledge, uh, uh, my my knowledge, my understanding of the talks of the books that I have read, I've listened to. Uh, I'm sure many of you read uh, Dr. Jill uh, Bolte Taylor's book, uh, My Stroke of Insight. 
uh, a neuroanatomist. Uh, and now she just came out with a book called uh, The Whole Brain Living. And I listened to her TED Talks, a neuroanatomist who experienced a stroke, uh, a hemorrhagic stroke in her left brain. And she dis made many wonderful discoveries. And I see that the doctor scientists, they discover the working of the brain, and it's really their discoveries. Uh, it's like the way we practice mindfulness. And that is why the, that's why Harvard University, they recently established Thich Nhat Hanh Center for Mindfulness and Public Health. So, and they name it after Thay. And in the and we use uh, the theme as mindfulness as the source of happiness or mindfulness, so that we can mindfulness as the source of healing. So we practice to discover the drops of emptiness to uh, find the causes of our suffering. We see one of the main causes of our suffering because we believe that we are we are separate self that we want to run away we want to hide away or we want to disappear or we find things to cover it up that all of these drugs cause us addiction and so the more we the more we use the drugs to forget to suppress the more we become dependent on it and become addicted to it, then we become the victims of our suffering. We are the ones who cause suffering to ourselves, and then we can cause people suffering because of our own suffering. So in order to to apply Buddhism uh, in our daily life, then we have to discover we don't have really a separate self. Like in the uh, inside, that brings us to uh, the other shore, the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara. When looking deeply, um, he recognized that the five skandhas are empty, empty, empty of a separate self, empty of something separate, but it's full of, full of the whole cosmos but it's empty, it's full of all causes and conditions. Do you see the image when Thay uh, used the cup? He would raise a cup and say, do you see this cup? Yes, we see the cup. Do you see that the cup is empty? Yes, what is it's empty of? It's empty of tea. It doesn't have tea, it's empty of tea. And yet because it's empty of tea, that it can be full of air, it's full of conditions that, so this emptiness is the emptiness of a separate self, separate existence. This emptiness is not like it doesn't exist, it doesn't mean that. Um, so to be able to discover this emptiness, um, the person with the name, let's say I'm Sister Bamboo, so that I, I can discover the emptiness in myself so that I don't suffer. And for a time, I've gone through some physical problems. Then I felt that I, I felt it also affected my mental health. I, I became very sensitive uh, to sounds, the sounds of the bell, when they are invited so harshly, then it would cause me serious headache and it caused me to be cry uh, uh, unpleasant, cranky. And or the strong smell also caused me reaction and it caused me to be uh, afraid of the crowd. And these are signs that we we don't criticize them as depression, but, but it's, that's true because we all have to go through 
different periods of our lives, difficulties that we suffer from depression. When the body is weak, when there's some a triggering factor, then these things will manifest in us. And when I discover these signs and symptoms in me, and I and I told a, a, a lay friend who is also from Nha Trang in Vietnam, my same uh, home um, town, I told her what we can do is we have to really hold on to the practice. First of all is to practice stopping Yang Lai. When I hear something, I recognize it. For example, in our daily life, when we live in a community like this, and there are interactions or conflicts, and something will would cause me will, will, will touch my ego, and I can feel that. I want to respond to read. I want to walk away, to go find another corner. I see that I I want to react. But with the choices uh, I have learned to make with the practice, I see that first of all is I need to stop. Stop right in that moment. In that mo at that moment of interaction of conflict, right in that moment, I learn to come back. When I stop, it's like you you are going on a freeway and you see cars passing by. If there are no red lights, uh, there are not stop signs. Don't know what will happen if we don't have those signs. Uh, and do you ever enjoy when your car is stopping, you are looking at the red light and you can come back to your breath? Have you ever ever enjoyed it like that? Those moments give you drops of emptiness when you come back to your breath and you taste this complete stopping and you are only with your breath. And it give it saves you. It say it can save your life. And when you can stop, then I myself I practice not saying anything, not responding, uh, not saying uh, responding to the situation. Sometimes I close my eyes. I come back to my breath. Even when I go swimming for my health, I also practice following my my breathing. And when I walk, like earlier we were doing walking meditation, when we when 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 we sit, we use our we sit quietly, but my my our mind may be disturbed. But when we walk, my our mind can be still, so we can combine the practice. So as we are doing walking meditation. The body is in movement, but if the mind can follow the breath, can follow the steps, we can see with an in-breath, how, how many steps can we take? With an out-breath, how many steps we can take? So I, that's we, I, I myself also practice stopping, practice yielding, not arguing, and those are moments that I practice like that. And... I always come back to my step. My steps are my prayers. I call on the Bodhisattva of deep listening, the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara. I, if, when I breathe in, I take three steps. Quang, te, am, like avalo. And then I breathe out. I take five steps. And I relax. I don't cal you know, think about things. I don't try let the calculative thinking mind take in place. And as I breathe out, so you can say Avalo Varaya. That's the name of the or Amish to the Bodhisattva of deep listening. Even if I have 
arthritis, I have pain, I still use the distance between the nunnery and the meditation hall. I take that as an opportunity to practice walking meditation, to regenerate these drops of emptiness to heal myself. And when I practice like that and stop being coming back like that, and it helps me to recognize more easily just simple recognition of what's happening. This moment, I'm irritated. I am uh, not at ease that I want to remind somebody of something. One time when I was Thay's attendant, Thay showed me uh, uh, like uh, this trellis where the roses uh, climb on the wall. And Thay said to me, my child, you see the roses, aren't they beautiful? And but at that moment, I was not very smart. I said, yes, beautiful. But the, the color is a bit um, too light. And Thay said, hmm. And when Thay made that sound, then I recognized that, oh, I added more adjectives to the roses, like light, dark, beautiful, not beautiful. I like it. I don't like it. But it's our practice is to come back to the breath and to have simple recognition. You don't add or subtract anything. When you hear, when you listen to a statement, like your child is saying something to you, or your husband, or your your wife, your partner saying something, just come back to the breath, and you recognize that there's the person is saying something. There's that complaint or that scolding that's right there. And when you have this simple recognition without repeating it or adding uh, to it, then it can help you a lot. And I. I will elaborate more on this point, how we deal with our emotions. And when we can practice simple recognition of what is happening, and we know that we are irritated, and we can accept it, that we are doing our best to practice, we can, we also accept the fact that that person is also trying to practice, or that person doesn't know anything about that practice. And we can have empathy, and we also give rise to gratitude that we still have each other, we are still living together. That's already a blessing. We are grateful that we, we have more conditions than many people out there. We, gratitude can be limitless. And with that recognition, uh, embrace acceptance and gratitude, then we can, it gives us energy to investigate to in what is happening. We can understand what, how the, the causes and conditions that have brought about that situation. That's investigation. It's not something you can do in a day, but daily we need to learn more, investigate more about ourselves, about our issues, and you know, investigate about the other, pe other person so that we can understand. And then it gives us that, um, that, that control, that under to what we want to, that understanding what we want to do in life. So when I was reading the book, The Whole Brain Living by uh, Dr. Jill, Taylor, Jill Bolte Taylor, then she used the, she shared that we have these two hemispheres, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brain. And when she had a stroke in eight years, it took her eight years to rehabilitate because there was this bleeding in her left brain and it shut down and she was not able to speak and her right brain took over and she was, it, she, it, she entered a state that she called as nirvana. There was no boundaries and she felt she was in oneness with this whole cosmos. Um, and there was this complete silence, and she felt 
this like limitless peace and silence and ideas of better or equal or less just kind of vanished in her. And all of those things that enter the mind of somebody who uh, of, uh, who strive to succeed, it just all vanished. Uh, and so she shared about her experience have, with having a stroke in her f first book, My Stroke of Insight. And uh, in her second book, The Whole Brain uh, Breathing, she used the word brain. It's very much like our teaching. Breathe, recognize, appreciation, uh, accept, investigation, and also to navigate. You see that the scientists, the doctors, the uh, uh, researchers, they have also begun to find that what we call as the interbeing, the nature of interbeing, the flexibility, the neuroplasticity of uh, our brain, of all the neurons. And she said that there's this law, it's called the uh, law of 90 seconds. When we have an emotion, something that triggers, uh, some push the button in us, and we take, uh, they call that as we have these neural pathways or the neural networks. It's a uh, neural networks. Uh, all of these neural uh, neurons connect together, and they establish these networks. And when there's a statement or a gesture or a sound. Um, that trigger us, like like that causes that causes us uh, agitation, and then we have uh, a strong emotion, a reaction. Our face will be red or be be, be purplish. There's this anger arising, or we feel depressed. So these strong emotions, actually, the 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 hormones should not last more than ninety seconds less than one and a half minutes. And then all these hormones, neurotransmitters, uh, are eliminated from the bloodstream. So the stress, these hormones that cause that, well, these stress hormones that can uh, bring about the fight, flight, or freeze, response in us, the stress response. And I find I've discovered in myself that there are times I feel I freeze and I run away. The, sometimes I just uh, shut down or sometimes I look at things. I shut out everything. I cannot see uh, the, the beautiful flowers nearby because I don't feel well in my body. And yesterday, when I was able to uh, pick up some flowers from the Sangha garden taken care by Amelia, and I made this uh, flower arrangement, like right now on the podium, I, I feel so happy that I can recognize the beauty of of the flowers, but there were times when I didn't see the beauty of the flowers. Do you feel such pity when you have your husband there, your children there, your house you still have, you have all these conditions, but if you are withdrawn, you are frozen, you don't feel anything, then that is such a pity, isn't it? I'm sharing this with my also, my long-term friend, for my hometown, we feel like, I say, I love Thai, I love the Sangha, but really I don't love, I don't feel that love. And so with, we listen to the teachings, we, but we learn in our daily life, all this, we can discover that we are, we are practitioners, whether monastic or lay, we have to be uh, realistic. It's easy to say, but it's not easy to do. And whether we are sincere in our practice, whether we stop to really stop to breathe. Many people nowadays wear these earphones in our ear, you know, 
are these the earphones are the the bluetooth i am not i do you download uh, to listen to the sound of the bell so you can breathe or you just listen to rap or music you just listen endlessly because you keep here you leave it in your ear and you listen so much why don't we have the sounds of the bell to remind us as well we need something to remind us I myself, I love to listen to the sound of the bell, like I'm walking. Like um, I'm wa we're walking and we're talking or doing something and we hear a sound of the bell or we hear a bird song or we hear uh, some sounds like the siren. Would we? Would we love ourselves enough to in at that moment we love ourselves enough to practice stopping? I am not afraid that you laugh at me or I am not self-conscious. I just close my eyes and I stop and I come back to my breath. That is listening to the call of my teacher to come back to my breath, to this present moment, to simply recognize what's right here, right now, and not to uh, narrate, to add more to the narrative. Um, to discover what I am going through and what the other person is going through to investigate so that I we have actually a, a choice. Uh, self, uh, although our suffering can cause us despair, but if we choose an upward direction, if we want to choose lightness and peace, we don't want to go downward. We, we don't want to be heavy and burdened by it and withdrawn, then it is our right. It's a choice. That's us. So when there is a deep sincerity to practice, then, then we allow ourselves each hour, each moment that we, we come back to the breath. If thanks to the sound of the bell or thanks to the reminder of a friend, we come back, keep coming back to practice mindful breathing, come back to the mindful steps so that we don't walk like Thay said, walk like you're being chased by a ghost. And when we sit, we also learn to practice still, even though I'm much older now. And even though I have had certain injuries in my body, but I still practice. Once I sit down, I sit in uh, the lotus position. I sit with Thay's back. I don't know how long I can maintain this, but Thay still can. Thay could still sit until towards the end of his life. For 70 years, Thay was able to do sitting meditation with his back straight. I'm much younger, so why can't I do it? So that's why I continue to practice. And the emotions that come to us, they will always go away because that's the law of impermanence. The earth and the sky are impermanent. Everything, even the songwriter Tin Kong Sung said the four seasons change the leaves, change the flowers, change my life. And so that's the song. Now it was it, it was raining earlier. Now it's um, very refreshing, very cool. We will have to face the the the, the Santa Ana wind and AI if we don't if, if we're not careful, then we will be controlled by AI. <laughs> and so we learn to cherish our human experience, to be able to, we, to cherish this life that we have, that we have this breath, that when we cherish 
the fact that everything is impermanent. We don't have to suffer because of impermanence. Thanks to impermanence, that there were days when I shut down, but. Of today, I can stand in front of you and share honestly about myself. That I use my own experience to help my own friends who are going through a difficult problem this time as well. So. Even as an as a practitioner, I cannot help many people. I, if I can only help one person, it already makes me happy. Sister Ho n g i m s o n was also a monk, and he said he just wanted to be able to help one person. And the truth is that, however, wherever we are, we cannot. It's you know we will always be in the hand of the Buddha wherever we go. We are still in the hand of the Buddha, even if we drink a soda, seven up all sorts of water uh, of drinks, and still, in the end, we still drink. When we wake up in the middle of night, if even if you drink champagne or different uh, famous wine, but you wake up, what do you thirst? You thirst for a cool cup of water, isn't it true? I I don't drink uh, alcoholic beverage, but after all that is after hangover, don't you just want a cup of water and see that that cool water is something very. Uh, refreshing, very beautiful, very pure, and it helps us to discover these drops of emptiness, because we we have learned about interbeing, interconnectedness. We are connected to infinite conditions, and we see that we are formed by innumerable uh, conditions by. Uh, many generations of ancestors, spiritual and biological, for us to be here today, to be who we are. So we give rise to gratitude, and it helps us to discover that we don't have a separate self. That we are full of all the conditions in. Our life in the cosmos, in society, they have all the conditions have come together to create um, who we are today. Dear Sangha,、uh, one time when I was、uh, in Blue at Blue Cliff Monastery, and it was during the winter, and the monast、uh, the meditation hall there is a little bigger than this meditation hall, also with all the glass windows like this, and we were sitting in the meditation hall, and we heard this very loud. Bang, and it was because of、uh, it's snowy outside.、Uh, it was、uh, very gray, and the bird didn't see, didn't know that it was a glass door. So it continued to fly, and it hit、uh, itself on the、uh, on the glass.、Uh, Pain and it was a very loud noise, and the bird fell down, and the bird stood so still that、uh, so still that after we left the meditation for half an hour, I and I came back and it was still there. I thought it was dead, standing up, but no, it did. There are times when the, an animal, like a bird, when it hit. Um, and then it would lie still, and then it start to tremor, and then after a while it flies away, and 
we we as human beings we are like that in our daily life sometimes an accident takes place so suddenly uh, and like you are in a car accident you have an injury those accidents if you can if you can be still sit still or lie still so that you can embrace yourself or somebody can help massage for you and hug you like a child. There are times when I wish I I was an eldest sister and my I had so many younger siblings that um, my mother didn't embrace, that didn't hug me, and I was also very stubborn. But sometimes I discover that I wish somebody would hug me because it's hard, it's not easy to hug me because I also avoid, I evade it. And so we all have the need to be to love and to be loved. And so after an accident, after an injury or some crisis, trauma, we call it trauma, and it takes place, allow ourselves, allow ourselves to lie down, to rest, so that somebody can care, help care for us, allow, hug our mother when our mother uh, has an injury, or uh, hold her hand or massage her feet or embrace your father, embrace your partner, your friend, so that they can overcome, uh, go through that. Otherwise, we are less than those animals because those animals, they know how to shake, to tremor, to, to release the, the stress, to heal themselves. Otherwise, it will accumulate in our body and our body um, keeps all the trauma in it. And when we are older, then different um, ailments will take place. I had gone through many car accidents, many uh, situations, and I always believed, oh, I'm such a strong person. I, th I thought I was such a strong, you know, resilient person. But now I discover that all of that, my body kept track of it, keep, kept the score of it. And so we need to learn to allow ourselves to, to, to take care of those wounds and traumas as we go along. Uh, uh, when I received the lamb transmission to become a Dharma teacher, uh, Thay gave me a poem. I was suffering a lot uh, at that time. I wanted to vanish then because uh, certain things happen in my own blood family. And when I read to him my inside poem, like the rice plant, uh, the rice, uh, it's full and ripe, full of love. It's like the coconut leaf spreading and waving in the wind. I take refuge in my, I anchor in the breath here and now, um, and I come back so that life can, uh, life can, can flourish. And I wrote, I used the image of the palm tree. It, wave were high in the wind, but they cross out the word high and they put clear, clear. And so that's the practice is to like this rice kernel full of milk in it, full of love in that. And there's uh, that it can hold the, the more, not to be proud, to be arrogant, but the more humble, the more grateful we are, this full of love, then it allows us to go through our difficulties. And Thay gave me um, the poem in response. Uh, the, 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 the bamboos are still there. The yellow flowers are still there. Thankfully, you are still there, Thay said, to... There are the old vows uh, are beautified 
I have many vows, old vows, and Thay also reminded me that I have many vows to beautify the Buddha land with their old vows. Listen to the the bird, the bird singing. I have to learn to listen to myself. I learn to listen to others so that I know when I should say something. And when I say something, would the other person be able to accept it? If that person is not able to accept it, and then I should not say anything. And so that's thanks to deep listening. We we can hear a lot, and we don't have to say a lot. Listening to the this. Uh, this bird singing and then we can see that uh, uh, can see our true nature so I have been a nun for 21 years now wearing this brown robe of a practitioner I have not been able to do much um, occasionally I discover that I have drops of emptiness some Occasionally, I see that I've crossed to the other shore. And I see there are many things that I have not yet crossed to the other shore. So I also invite you to continue to practice mindfulness so that you can pick up these drops of emptiness from your practice so that you can cross the sh to the other shore again and again and again so that you can taste peace and happiness right here, right in the palm of your hand. That life, life has both sides, two, two sides. If you want to be happy, it depends on your way of thinking and only the way uh, that your mindfulness can help you change. Uh, my right mindfulness will give us the right, right view and right thinking and it helps us to cross to the other shore. Thank you so much for your listening.